One. I came to the world with one goal. To catch and love all the Pokemon of the world. I saw nothing that I wanted from the power of controlling the gyms. And I wanted to stay out of this war for control that I saw consuming my friends. Due to this, I decided to stay neutral. I had no team. I sought no battles of power. I just wanted to catch Pokemon and hatch them from eggs. I had about 31 unique Pokemon. And I was level 9, all while remaining neutral. I was so proud of my progress. No, my Pokemon weren't the most powerful, but they were mine. Today at work. I work as a web developer, so all my co-workers are playing. For the first time since Wednesday, because I was on vacation. We started talking, and the five co-workers on my web team all were working together to control the gym that is across the street from our office. And they were all on the same team. I told them that I didn't have a team. And when we were all sharing phones, looking at each other's Pokemon, I stepped out and went to the bathroom. This bathroom break was my mistake. I came back and my phone was on my desk and my co-worker says, I fixed your game and made sure we were all on the same team. I knew what it meant, so I grabbed my phone and saw that he had placed me on Team Valor against my will against everything I wanted and have worked for. I have yet to open the app again in the past three hours because I don't know what I should do. I want to find myself reincarnated as a neutral and avoid this war. But I don't want to lose all my progress. I just never knew that my co-worker, my friend, would do such a thing to me. 2. Walking through the Charleston Navy Yard, Boston, Massachusetts, we came upon the gym located aboard the USS Casson Young. As we approached with our phones out, two Navy cadets started yelling at us. Initially, my blood ran cold, thinking that somehow we were trespassing on Navy property, or it was illegal to take pictures of Navy vessels or something. But then I heard what they were saying. Hey! That gem belongs to the Navy. You take it, we'll take it right back. Made our night. Edit. 3. Last night I decided to go to a local park in a pretty populous area to take advantage of all the Pokestops compared to the more rural area I live in. It was around 11.30 so I figured there'd be a few people around. But when I got there, there must have been about 300 people. Every single one of them just walking around, talking to each other, and playing Pokemon. I decided to go to the middle of the park because there's a bunch of lure modules out. And this kid walks over saying, yeah, My friends went off somewhere to catch an onyx, but I have an egg hatching and I wanted to share my first egg with people. Everyone crowds around like, Yeah man, congrats on your first egg! And they wait for it to hatch. And it's a... Uh, Gyarados. And everyone loses their minds. The kid is sprinting in circles, starts screaming, Gyarados! So naturally, every person walking around this 10 acre park flock to his exact location thinking there's a Gyarados to be had. Everyone is, of course, bummed when they find there is no Gyarados for them. But people are still all hanging out in this huge crowd in the middle of talking shit about teams and hanging by the lure modules. I go off to find some Pokemon that was on the outskirts of the park and a few minutes later I hear one voice scream Squirtle! And again, the whole crowd flips its biscuits there's people screaming and running around when they catch it. All of a sudden, the sprinklers turn on right in the middle of this huge group of people freaking out about Squirtle. And about 50 people get absolutely blasted by this industrial strength wall of water. I'm just taking it all in, practically dying of laughter. 
from the pure chaos of it all. Eventually the cops actually showed up and kicked everyone out for being at a park past closing time. But the crowd was there for quite some time after. This game is awesome. 4. Early this morning I decided I was going to take the gym from my local church. Team Mystic had it captured. After hitting up a few Pokestops on the way there, I was stopped by someone in their car while crossing the street. He flagged me down and asked me to come over to his car. What you doing? Just backing around? Yeah, playing Pokemon on my phone. Uh... Do you have a boyfriend? Uh, no, why? Are you one of those transsexuals? I'm visibly trans, recently started hormone replacement therapy. As he noticed from a closer glance. Yeah, why what's up? Have you ever sucked a dick before? <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't done anything remotely sexual for a long time. Damn. That sucks. I was wondering if you wanted to suck my dick. Not really. Sorry, friend. At that point, I had rode off casually confused as to what happened. I've never even close been put into a situation like that on or offline. Interesting way to start the day. 5. The college campus I live on, blah blah blah, is about to have a riot on their hands. One campus officer took it upon himself to try and kick everyone playing Pokemon Go off campus. The majority of us are students and live here. The officer was doing this because two men tried to break into a building, got caught, and used the excuse that they were trying to catch a Pokemon. This is absurd. I tried to reason with the officer, saying there's no campus policy, saying we can't walk around campus hours. There's no policy saying we can't play phone games. Tomorrow a bunch of us PK Go players are going to Campus PD to complain about this officer. I really hope we don't see a lot of criminal activity trying to be passed off as people playing Pokemon and give this game a bad name. For anyone interested, I have a Slack team for Pokemon Go. It's mostly locals, but I will create channels for any region. We have private channels set up for each of them. Rare sightings channels, PM me for an invite. Edit. Thanks for the attention, fellow trainers. Politics, eh? I will post an update with how talking to the PD goes. Maybe someone there will be a little more sensible and not shove their mag light in my face. Edit too. Damn, I wish my Pokemon CP was as high as this post's karma. College campus named. Please, no hate mail. Let's be civil. Edit 3. I will still be going to the campus PD. I'm at work for another two hours. For anyone curious. Update. I talked to the campus PD today. The officer I spoke to was a super awesome guy. He told me that the officer from the night before was confused on the situation. He informed that he was familiar with the game. Told me no comment on whether he played or not but that he had played Ingress when it was popular on campus. I was told we could play any time we wanted, as long as we didn't do anything illegal. Which is how it should be. He gave me his name to use if we had any issues, and offered his hand to shake. As I walked out he said, Good luck bro. He also had the dopest mustache. 6. I had my brother, 23, put Pokemon Go on his phone two nights ago. Even though he seemed less than thrilled about the whole idea, he quickly became as excited as I was when we started finding Rattatas and Nidorans on the streets. We quickly found out that Pokemon Go doesn't work well in a fast-moving car. His solution? Driving really slow. But we couldn't drive many places at the speed we figured we needed to stoop down to. Suddenly, he veers off of the highway onto a dirt road. Keep in mind it's raining and it's 9pm. I'm a little worried, but too excited to tell him to turn back. So we're driving through the woods, 
down an unmaintained dirt road with plants and whatnot hanging in front of the windshield. Pokemon Go still isn't working. We're getting increasingly disappointed that we're no longer catching what we had been back in town. Suddenly, up ahead, in the game, there are leaves moving, which with my novice knowledge made me think that something awesome was lurking up ahead. I let him in on my theory. He smiles, looks out the windshield, and freezes. I'm not paying attention as we start to slow down. Then up ahead, I see it. Two glowing eyes and brown fur. We sit there in confusion for a moment or two before inching forward a little more. There, sitting on the road, of the passenger side, is a big, flabby-looking dog. He looks hurt. Should we get out? I ask. My brother reminds me of rabies, and we decide we'll stay in the car. But the dog doesn't move. The dog stands right in front of the car as we try to move forward, not wanting to hit it. We stop a few feet away from it. It glares at us. A large drop of drool beginning to make a steady drip from its saggy mouth. We contemplate honking the horn at it, but it was late, and we weren't sure what else was in the middle of nowhere with us. It would have been dangerous to go in reverse, back the way we came. And we weren't fond of the idea of getting out and shooing it away. I put down my window and leaned out a little and said, Hey, bud, could you move? I was greeted with a growl and a careful step forward. I leaned back in and put the window up. Well, shoot. A few minutes pass. Pokemon Go is still silent. Nothing, not even Pokemon, was going to show up and move this dog along. Eventually, after who knows how long, probably only 15 minutes, the thing stands up and shambles past the car. My brother started driving away and we weren't sure what to say to each other. Eventually, I broke the ice. Damn. What is it? We came all this way out here to catch something, and we let a Houndoom get away. So, that was the first night I played Pokemon Go. 7. A few days ago, I was taking a bike ride to the Arboretum, just a few blocks from my house. I gotta say, this place was a gold mine for awesome Pokemon. Drowsy, Krabby, and best of all, Dratini. So many Dratini. Eventually, I locked up my bike and walked the footpath that goes a few miles around the whole thing. Probably 10 or 15 Pokestops along the way. And three gyms. The whole time, I see people ahead of me catching Pokemon. Or people walking the opposite direction. Maybe an hour or two later, I reach a grouping of three Pokestops with lures on them. Just one guy is standing there, and I strike up a conversation with him. Turns out he's the guy who set up the lures, and there are already people wandering into the lures as we're talking. He says he's going to be putting lures on all of the Pokestops in the park for the day, and gives me a tip to check out a small park downtown at night. We shake hands and go on our separate ways. As I'm heading back to grab my bike, I stop to talk to a group of fellow Go players. One of them sports the tattoo I have along my shoulder, which is part of a global tattoo project. And it turns out she has one too. It was so crazy to meet someone in this community who was also part of another community that is much, much smaller. Fast forward to about 11pm. My friend gets off work and picks me up to go downtown and check out the scene. It's fairly crowded downtown, which is to be expected for a Saturday night, but what was even cooler was the fact that a certain portion of the crowd was composed of people playing Go. He was absolutely baffled by it. I was a bit awestruck that this game was bringing so many people out to meet each other. We keep walking, catching Pokemon. We got a few pincer, Lots of Bellsprout and a Magmar. Till we finally reached the park. There were so many fellow players there. A bunch of them wearing various Ash Ketchum hats. From the various Pokemon series. The park is full of even cooler Pokemon. Tangela. Heard of a few Tauros. And we both got a Bulbasaur on our way back to his car. 
What was even crazier? As we left, the same guy who said I should check out downtown was walking and spotted me. We talked a bit and laughed at the crazy coincidence of seeing each other again. Talked about what we'd gotten that day, then parted ways again. All in all, I guess I just wanted to say how I love that this game is bringing all sorts of people together. I can't wait to get out again and meet people. 8. So I went to church today, even though I've stopped being really religious because I knew that the big church I used to go to would have a few pokey stops. It's one of those ridiculous big mega churches with the sermons on TV and stuff. So I was hanging out on the second floor balcony, overlooking the indoor fountain that also happened to be a Pokestop, and I dropped my lure and waited. After about ten minutes, I noticed a guy on the first floor sitting on a bench on his phone. We awkwardly exchanged glances a few times because at that distance, you can't really tell if someone is looking at you or not, and because we're awkward nerds. Eventually, we maintain some eye contact, and he points at his phone, and I nod. Hello, fellow Pogoer. Twenty more minutes pass, and he exchanges the favor by dropping his own door module. I nod to say thanks before noticing a third guy on his phone walk out of the place where the service is being held and sit by the fountain. Me and the guy number one look at him and then back at each other and basically telepathically communicate. Is this guy one of us? Yeah, I think so. We end up meeting up at the closest gym when the lords ran out and had a blue versus red tug of war until we realize that as long as we're all there, no one will stay gym leader. There were two people fighting for the gym that weren't accounted for, three blue, two red total, when only three of us met up, so I wonder if those two mystery players who were lurking somewhere realized what was all going on. 9. My older non-gaming neighbors were up in almost literal arms, and had even called the police regarding the amount of traffic this weekend on our block. We live in a secluded area of town most people think is a dead end, and there are houses only on one side of the street. The other side is the corner of a nature reserve, a big grass field, and a Seventh-day Adventist church. Not only is there a stop there, it turns out there is also a gym in my front yard. Seriously, I can get into it from my bed. Anyway, I had to explain to my neighbors and a local police officer what was going on at 10.30pm. A car pulled up while we were talking, so my ex-marine with a shotgun-ready neighbor confronted them and came back shaking his head. They couldn't believe they were playing a video game in the church parking lot and getting high to boot. Anyway, I have never played Pokemon before and I only downloaded the app to confirm the suspicious behavior outside. I had seen some posts online and thought the game was a good idea to get kids out of the house and moving around. What with all the shootings and tension lately in the nation, and another wondered if the game couldn't be used to stalk kids. So at least I learned I have paranoid neighbors. 10. So I'm currently visiting family in Illinois, and decided to hit the local park gym. I've heard many stories about people using Lure Module, and I decided to try it out. This eventually led to one of those stories. I stopped by the poker spot to meet a bunch of people. While I'm complaining about how Mystic is overflowing America with my fellow Instinct teammate, my sister tells me something. It turns out, not only did my lure module attract Pokemon and trainers, but it attracted a lost dog too. Its name was Max, and had elegant brown fur. My brother notices that there was a name tag as well as phone numbers on it. I call the numbers, but they both don't answer. Eventually, a bunch of kids and teens come running to the park screaming, Pokespot! I ask them if they know who the owner was. They didn't, but they help out a lot. A girl brought a leash so Max can walk around without running away. 
Then the said Team Instinct member takes care of the dog up until another group comes by. The girl in this group helped out with finding and is currently looking for the owner as I'm typing this post. She knows the area well, so my family gave Max to her in hopes she will find the owner. As the lure module runs out of juice, people eventually left. They thanked me for putting the lure module there, and I thanked them for helping the dog. I leave as well, while I'm furiously throwing pokeballs at the nearest Pidgeot. I noticed that another person set off a lure module. It was that same Team Instinct player from earlier. I praise him for putting the lure module there. I eventually say goodbye to him and wish him luck on his journey as I walk off in the sunset. 11. It's no secret that I'm a loner. I tell people this up front when they meet me, not to expect things. By meet, I normally mean online, safely behind my PC. Over the years, my lonerism has gotten worse and worse. With that, I'm sure my gloomy nature is more than just that. But I haven't seen a doctor, so I won't say I have anything wrong with me. As to not make this a dreadfully long post, I'll sum up that I went from outgoing, semi-fit, to not caring what I eat, where I look like, for the most part. I stopped being excited for anything that was outside the borders of my home. That is, until I found out about Pokemon Go. I've recently downloaded it, and the first few hours, I sat there, staring at my character and then glancing outside, wanting to, but afraid to actually go. Today I went, and I didn't plan on going very far. There was a Pokestop close by, and I thought that'd be a good start. It felt so liberating to walk there with a sense of purpose I've not felt in 10 years. That's how long I've been sitting at home. I kept walking and went to two more Pokestops. I only caught two Pokemon, but I loved every second of it. I smiled the entire way that I thought I'd share that with a bunch of people that I don't know. Maybe, perhaps. A few of you are also excited but afraid. Hopefully you'll take the same step I did. I promise you won't regret it. Unless you don't look left and right before crossing with your phone in front of your face. Hey everyone, Hellfreezer here. Thank you very much for listening to this collection of Pokemon Go experiences. Well, this was kind of a... Kind of a random thought that came to me. Last night, actually. So I'd like to say thank you very much to the kindness and the experience of the people who allowed me to use their stories because they were so very quick in responding and telling me that I could use them. I'd record the, the handful that I had. Like, okay, I'll just record these and put them away and eventually I'll have enough. And by the time I was done with those, I'd have another one, another two, and so on. So they just kept coming. I hope you enjoyed these experiences. Bit of a mix. But that is pretty much what I was going for with this. Wanted a nice variety of varied experiences. Okay. I think that's about it for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening. And take very good care of yourselves. Oh, and if you are playing Pokemon Go, please be safe. Don't do it while driving. Be aware of your surroundings. Basically, like I said, take care of yourselves.